OE codes. They're so much fun. <laughs> A lot of people get confused about e-codes, but it's not really that big of a deal once you start playing around with them a little bit. The mystery behind e-codes. Okay, now, like I said, e-codes can be a lot of fun. And uh, in fact, you'll hear people joke around and say, there's a code for that, you know, and if my husband has an ache or a pain, sometimes I'll say that and he gets annoyed. But uh, it's true. If, if something happens to somebody, there, there's probably an e-code for that. The actual section is supplementary classifications of external causes of injury and poisonings and they go from E000 to E999. Now to put that in layman's term what that means is you're going to be able to describe events and circumstances that caused an injury. Now why would you want to do that? For one thing a lot of people forget that uh, coding originally was set uh, for statistics. That's why we know how many people have a certain type of cancer in a specific area uh, in a given year. Now, statistic wise, think about this. How many people were injured in a car accident last year? Because there's E codes specifically for car accidents. Now, uh, you can even break it down with E codes and fine tune it a little bit more. Nature of the injury can be defined by uh, the possible extent. Okay, so you have an auto accident, the person was a driver and they hit the guardrail, or another E code would be the same thing, auto accident driver and they hit a head-on collision. Now, if you're thinking about what type of injuries that are going to go along with that person, hitting a guardrail versus hitting a head-on collision with another vehicle, the head-on collision is going to have more extensive damages. Also, a driver versus a person that is in the back seat or a passenger. Now, with airbags, it's not a big deal, but in my ER days, one of the first things that uh, the ER doc wanted to know was, were they the driver? And that's because if you're the driver of an auto accident, the steering wheel is going to hit you in the chest and you're going to have things like peri uh, you're going to have um, uh, tamponades and, and all kinds of real exciting things going on in the chest <laughs> if you slammed in uh, it's called a pericardial tamponade or something like that and so that that's just something that he needs to know so uh, the when when you go to a subsequent visits that person can look on there and say oh okay we're doing a follow-up because this person got uh, uh, hit in the chest by a steering wheel because they were the driver of the accident. Now, something to note about e-codes, you're never, ever, ever, ever going to use them as a principal diagnosis. They describe the circumstance around the injury, not the nature of the injury. So keep that in mind. If you see that on the CPC exam and e-code first, just mark it off. You don't even have to look at that, uh, that one anymore. A few things to also to keep in mind, they are not used in subsequent encounters. So if a person comes in uh, to the ER and they were in a car accident and they, you know, ran the steering wheel in their chest and they broke, you know, five ribs. Now when they go to their doctor for a follow-up visit or a follow-up x-ray, they don't care about that e-code anymore. That e-code is not going to be appended uh, in those uh, codes anymore. Also, you can use more than one e-code at a time. Some people get confused thinking, oh, well, I can only use one. No, sometimes to describe what's going on, you need more than one e-code. Another thing to keep in mind is that there's a separate alphabetic index for e-codes. So when you go in and you look in your, uh, your index and you're trying to find an auto accident, you're not going to find it because they have their own index. Now, pay attention when, uh, to the includes and excludes in the E codes. That's what's fine tuning to make sure you've got the proper code. And they can be kind of humorous. So, uh, you know, you can, you can have a lot of fun with them. Uh, there's actually a YouTube video, some people do that, and I think Laureen knew who they were. I came across them not too long ago and she'd already heard of them. And I think it's called something like, uh, you know, there's a code for that or I can code that. And they actually take these funny YouTube videos with people falling and running That's into fine stuff. To code. And then they put the e code up and it, it's hilarious. Yep. And uh, actually, this. Uh, 
uh, next month for our local chapter meeting, we're doing a study on e-codes, and we're going to do e-codes involving Christmas, like uh, you know, Santa got uh, or Grandma got ran over by a reindeer, and Santa slipped on the <laughs> snow and ice. Because there's codes for that, you know. So have fun with them. Uh, if you need some extra uh, reading time, just go read your e-codes. They're mm -hmm. a lot of fun. And um, one of my helpful tips is I personally can't stand the e-code index because I don't feel it. it's in normal language. For example, if a kid fell off their bike, you would be looking for bicycle or something in the index. Well, they call it a pedal cyclist. We don't talk <laughs> that way, true. you know. So Yeah, I don't usually use the index either. The e-code section is not very big, and once you get the hang of it, you can almost flip through the pages and figure them out faster than looking them up in the index. Right. Now, there is an Appendix E, which is easy to remember because we're talking about e-codes, mm -hmm. and what that is is it's co a collapsed view of the 17 chapters and the V-code and e-code chapter. So it only goes to the the third digit category level. It doesn't get into the fourth and fifth digit. There's there's no includes and excludes. Um, I really encourage you to go look at your appendix E and go to the end where the E codes start. And because ICD is a classification system, it has to fit in the right category. And when you start skimming that, you can quickly find what three digit category you should be in and then turn there um, in the tabular for E codes and you will be much more successful at your e-coding than trying to use the e-code index, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to keep in mind that there wouldn't be an e-code if somebody hadn't done it. Right. That's what's fun. 